How the inner ear helps your balance. A lot of times when people have a problem with their balance, they will tell you that there's something wrong with their inner ear and that's why they're having a balance problem. Now, there are definitely times when the inner ear and problems with the inner ear can result in a balance problem, but there definitely are a lot of other things and a lot of other problems that can come up that can result in bad balance. But I think it would be good to understand more what the inner ear is and how it provides balance information. So the ear has sort of three, three sections. There's the outer ear, which is the ear lobe and the ear canal all the way up to the eardrum. And the purpose of that is just to conduct sound into the ear. Then there's the middle ear, which is really three bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. These bones vibrate when sound comes through the outer ear and it conducts those vibrations of sound into the inner ear. Now the inner ear looks a lot like a snail. Um, there's really two parts to the inner ear. There's the cochlea, which is the part that looks like the shell of a snail. It's a spiral chamber, and that chamber is filled with hair cells. When the malus, inkies, and stapes conduct sound vibrations into the cochlea, the cochlea has a fluid inside of it. As that fluid vibrates, special cells that line that chamber detect frequencies of sound, and that's how someone hears. But there's another part of this, of this organ that's called the labyrinth, and in the area of the labyrinth, that's where balance and balance information comes from. So the way this works is this. The center part of the, of the labyrinth um, is called the vestibule. In the vestibule, there's two chambers, one that's called the saccule and one that's called the utricle. The utricle is responsible for linear motion, so forward and back or side to side motion. And inside the utricle is fluid. Um, this fluid is called endolithic fluid and it's very um, uh, thick, kind of like oil. And as someone moves forward or backward, there's little tiny calcium carbonate crystals in this area that move and as those crystals move, they bend the hair cells that are, that are lining this cavity and that tells your brain if you're moving forward or backward or accelerating or deaccelerating. In the saccule, it's more up and down and that area gives you up and down motion. So if you're in an elevator and you're moving up, the crystals that are in the saccule move down and that gives you a sense that you're, that you're moving up in an elevator. And the same is true when you're in the same elevator and moving down because gravity acts on those crystals and pulls them down even further as you're moving down and you get a sense that you're moving down. Or if you're in a car and the car accelerates, it pulls the crystals in the utricle back and that's what gives you a sense of acceleration. Now there's another part of the labyrinth that's called the semicircular canals. And these are three canals that are organized in 90 degree angles to each other. So when you move your head in any direction or your body in any direction, whether it's forward, backward, or side to side, the fluid that's in these semicircular canals moves and that gives you a sense of motion. Now there aren't supposed to be crystals in the semicircular canal, just this fluid. So the cells in that area are specialized to detect a movement only in the fluid. So what they do is not only do they give you a sense of motion, but they also tell your eye which way to move. So when you bring your head to the right, your eyes will move to compensate that right motion so you can still see things. If we didn't have that organ working, that, that semicircular canal reflex working, when you move, you wouldn't be able to see the world as well as you do. So it's very important that that organ works correctly because that's what coordinates your eye movement with your body's motion. Now one thing that can go wrong is if the crystals that are in the utricle and saccule somehow move in the wrong place into the semicircular canals, that can cause a problem that's called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And what that means is that those crystals find their way into the semicircular canal and press down on the hair cells 
and it tricks the hair cells into thinking the person's moving when they're not moving and that makes the person's eyes move in, in whatever direction the crystal is pressing on them and it tricks the person into feeling that there's motion and actually seeing motion when there isn't motion. And there are some ways to correct that problem and move the crystals out of that region where they're not supposed to be. But a lot of times um, people will think that whenever they have vertigo, wherever they have a balance problem, that there's something wrong with this organ. And what I've just described is really, that's all the information that this organ provides to the brain to give you a sense of balance and help you coordinate your movement. And it's very, very important that your brain get that information so that you can have coordinated movement. But there's also information from the eyes, from your ears, from mechanoreceptors in all of your joints. All of that is necessary for the brain to make coordinated mo motion. Um, so I hope this short video explains to you what the inner ear is and how the inner ear helps you um, have a sense of balance. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. And in the description, I'll include links of other videos that you might find helpful.